In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God, forever and ever.
Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí, porque me ha ungido y me ha enviado para anunciar la buena nueva a los pobres, a curar a los de corazón quebrantado, a proclamar el perdón a los cautivos y la libertad a los prisioneros, a pregonar el año de gracia del Señor, el día de la venganza de nuestro Dios. El Señor me ha enviado a consolar a los afligidos, a los afligidos de Sion, a cambiar su ceniza en diadema, sus lágrimas en aceite perfumado de alegría y su abatimiento en cánticos. Ustedes serán llamados sacerdotes del Señor, ministros de nuestro Dios se les llamará. Esto dice el Señor, yo les daré su recompensa fielmente y haré con ellos un pacto perpetuo. Su estirpe será célebre entre las naciones y sus vástagos entre los pueblos. Cuantos los vean, reconocerán que son la estirpe que bendijo el Señor. Palabra de Dios, te alabamos, Señor. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever. My faithfulness and my kindness shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the death and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, praise for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierce him. All the people of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord.
Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Praise and honor to Good Shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome, everybody, to St. Cecilia Cathedral. Special welcome to Archbishop Curtis. He, he told me this is, he, I can't remember the exact number, but it's 60-plus chrism masses that he's had in, uh, in his priesthood and as a bishop without missing one. You can imagine he hasn't missed one. Um, welcome to you. Uh, welcome to our parishioners from uh, parishes around the archdiocese, uh, dear religious sisters and, and brothers, See a lot of young Catholics here in, in the cathedral. Some of you, I think, are getting ready 
to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. And so I'm grateful uh, that you're able uh, to, to be here. Special welcome to the elect and those candidates for sacraments at the Easter Vigil. Time is drawing close when you will receive the Easter sacraments and we'll embrace you fully as our brothers and sisters in, in the Lord. So it's with great anticipation and joy that, that we think about that and, and that we, we welcome you. And, and especially, I'm happy to be here with my brother priests who come always to this Mass year by year in great numbers. Our priests will renew their priestly commitment today. That's a commitment they're already keeping, as you know, so generously and so faithfully as they pour themselves out in the person of Jesus, in praise of God, day by day, and in service to you, God's holy people. This chrism mass, oils will be blessed and consecrated. They're signs of God's favor to us in the church, in our time and place. God's favor poured out on us as we make our way along the journey of faith that leads ultimately to full life in the kingdom of God. But where through the sacraments we experience now, even in the face of challenges, especially then, unmistakable signs of the power of the Paschal mystery to save us and to raise us up. First, I'll bless the oil of the sick. Sickness and death, we know, are facts of life, facts of life for everyone. There are also moments of grace, as we know, opportunities for an encounter, a very personal encounter with the crucified and risen Lord. The church means for these to be anointed moments. And we know that if we live or if we die, we are the Lord's. The church wants us to know that and wants those who are sick and those who care for the sick to recognize and feel his presence. Second, we bless the oil of catechumens. I'm sad to say, which my pr brother priests know this, I think we all know it, that more and more of our neighbors in the communities in which we live and minister are unbaptized. More and more have not had the opportunity to meet Jesus Christ and to know of his saving love for them. This sad knowledge contains an invitation for all of us to see them first <clears throat> and then to connect with them and to commit to share the light of Christ with them as a gift. This is the challenge and the privilege of evangelization and it's a real one in our time. One that in all of our parishes we desire to meet and it's my sincere desire that maybe in this coming year, through our efforts aided by the help of the Holy Spirit, some of our parishes will run out of the oil of catechumens. I'll be happy to make some more. <laughs> Third, we consecrate the oil of chrism. I'm happy to announce that two men Zachary Eishide, who proclaimed the gospel just a few moments ago, and Matthew Pullman, who's finishing up in Rome, have petitioned to be ordained to the sacred priesthood. And I've told them, yes, I will ordain them at the beginning of June. They will be anointed with the chrism that's being consecrated today. As so we have participated in, continue to participate in a Eucharistic revival in our country and in our lives, our parishes, we know that the gift of the priesthood is essential. If we're going to have the gift of the Eucharist and be a Eucharistic people, as is the Lord's desire for us. And so we're so grateful to those two men who will be ordained priests here, and I ask you to join me in, in praying for them in, in, in the coming weeks. There are hundreds of young people all across the archdiocese are being prepared now for the sacrament of confirmation. 
celebrate confirmation all year long, of course, but I did it for the last time, the end of last week, with the chrism that was consecrated last year, and look forward now to confirming some of you who are here, but also many, many more in the weeks and in, in the months ahead. As we bless and consecrate the oils, we should pray together for our life that we share in Christ here in this archdiocese. There are beautiful and rich prayers that contain the blessing and the consecration for these oils. And it's hard to boil down each of those prayers of blessing to a single thought, but I decided to try it anyway. As we ask God's blessing on the oil of the sick, we pray in a special way for restoration for those who are sick, but for all of us. Restoration in body, in soul, and in spirit, according to the mind of God and the desire of God for our life in Christ. So we bless the oil of catechumens. We pray for the courage to embrace the gospel and to live it, each of us in our own way, our own vocation. We pray as the chrism is consecrated that we might be strengthened in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying with these themes in a special way today for my brother priests, and I ask you all to join me in praying for them. Our priests can feel worn out, sometimes even beat up, by the daily availability that's part of their vocation. We've recognized together, especially in recent months, how vulnerable we are, vulnerable in body, in spirit, in reputation. There's a, a questioning all through our culture these days of authority and of people in leadership, and those in pastoral leadership are not exempt from questioning and, and from criticism. And so we pray today for restoration and healing as it is needed for each of our priests and for our presbyterate all together. We know that the culture in which we live and work, study, pray, worship, is becoming more secular. It has a real particular meaning. It means our culture is marked more day by day by a lack of faith in God. And as I mentioned, there are so many of our neighbors who live as if God were not part of their life. I say that not in judgment, but, but in sadness. And any one of us on a given day can doubt or can feel that, that God is not, not close to us. This secularism, this weakness of faith, touches priests and bishops as well as it touches our people. And so we pray for our priests, for ourselves, for the courage to embrace, to live, and to preach the gospel with all of its beauty, with all of its power. And especially this week, we embrace the chance to, to preach the, the charisma, the paschal mystery, the love, the astounding love of our Heavenly Father for us and our Savior Jesus Christ, who has humbled himself for our sake and now reigns in glory to save us and to lead us home. Finally, as we make our way on a particular journey of faith in, in this archdiocese, I've observed and have heard also directly from some of our priests about feeling overwhelmed, about living with our people, leading them in a time that seems unsettled. It's unsettled all around us, but even within our parish communities, we can become weary. We look for coordinates and don't always see them as we might have in another time. So please pray with me for our priests that we all might be renewed in strength by the Holy Spirit and in the wisdom and the prudence that the Holy Spirit so readily gives. 
I think I would like to offer particular encouragement today at this Prism Mass as we begin this Holy Week to follow the example that Jesus gives us in the Gospel that the deacon just proclaimed for us. Jesus was in the midst of God's people. He knew them. They knew him. Not all accepted him, his identity or his authority. But he stood in their midst and he unrolled the scroll of the scriptures. It's an easy enough gesture for us to pass right over as we get to the part of what the scripture said and, and then what, what Jesus said. But that simple gesture is full of profound possibilities. Jesus opened up for the people the promise of God, the living promise of God to them, and the promise the Father was making in him and through him. In a world that's broken and churned up by so many things, the promise of God stands, and it remains among us fruitful. So I encourage you, my brother priests, as I also encourage myself as we gather this Mass, this year, this particular moment in our history, our diocesan history, to just notice these coming holy days, how often we do this, this that Jesus has done, configured to Christ. We open the Liturgy of the Hours. We open the Bible in our personal prayer. We open the lectionary to prepare our homilies. Then we stand in the midst of the people whom we know so well, who have a variety of thoughts about us sometimes, but we open the scriptures for them. We open the promise of God for them, even in challenging times. We open it in our preaching and our ordinary conversations and relations with them, really in every aspect of our ministry. Jesus, the living word, is with us there when we unroll the scroll when we open the scriptures we encounter him the living word he alone our high priest and brother is the source of our restoration of our healing of our courage in the face of obstacles he is the source of the promise of the gift of the holy spirit and the strength and consolation that comes as we receive again and again the outpouring of that gift. This Holy Week, all of us, priests and people, look to Jesus, the living Word. He is the promise of the Father being fulfilled in our hearing, in our praying, in our living. Invite my brother priest to stand, please. <clears throat> Beloved sons, as we approach the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Amen. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus? and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties toward Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. 
Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ, the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? Now I address you, my brothers and sisters in the congregation, and I invite you to stand. Dear sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life.
We bring the oil for the chrism, the mixture of oil and fragrant perfume, and ask that it be consecrated to anoint all the baptized in the sacrament of confirmation, to anoint the presbyter's hands and the bishop's head, to anoint also the altar and the walls of the church. We who prepare candidates for ordination, we who prepare our people for confirmation, and we who build places for God's people to gather in prayer, ask this blessing. This mixture of oil and perfume will be consecrated. May you be strengthened by God's grace as you continue to serve his people through your ministry. Behold now the oil for holy chrism, all anointed with it in the splendor of holiness, will shine on the world. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we bring the oil of the sick and ask that it be blessed for the anointing of all those who suffer in mind and body. By the holy anointing, may the sick gain strength even in their suffering. May they be released from fear and receive the consolation of faith. We who minister to the sick and elderly throughout the archdiocese ask for this blessing. This oil will be blessed and carried to all our parishes. We pray also for all of you who minister to the sick. Be constant and patient in your task. Behold now the oil which will be used for anointing the mm -hmm. sick. Thanks be to God. We bring the oil of the catechumens and ask that it be blessed for the anointing of all the infants, children, and adults who are called to prepare for baptism. By this anointing, may they receive strength to renounce sin and the glamour of evil, and so approach the waters of baptism. This oil will be blessed and carried to every parish to anoint infants and catechumens with the strength of Christ. We pray also for you who minister to parents and to catechumens. By your daily lives, may you show them the sweetness of the gospel and the glory of the cross. Behold now the oil which will anoint all those to be baptized. Thanks be to God. O God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit, may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, strength and protection of your people who have made the oil you created a sign of strength. 
graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God, the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O oh God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, and among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed when every offense is re removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him. After he had been washed in water, still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were pleased in him, your only begotten Son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in Psalm, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of, the first, of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, 
priestly and prophetic dignity, be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift, in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal, of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us the grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they grow, as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in, exal as in exaltation we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the ever-glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. <clears throat> we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim thy death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, 
command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.